Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in my devlog series. So in this episode, what I am hoping to have done is physics. So I don't anticipate that I'll have it completely done, but what I am hoping is that I will have a pretty good system for collision detection and resolution so I can finally start moving on with my game and actually employing some real gameplay. So that is the goal for this video. We'll see how far I get. Before I begin to code the physics, I do want to give a brief explanation of what my plan, my course of action is to actually compute physics. So in your game world, you may have a variety of objects uh, represented by these shapes. And say you have all these objects, how can you efficiently detect collisions between them? Because that is my next step, is I want to be able to detect and see if there are collisions between objects, and then if there is, to resolve those collisions. So the first thing that you have to do is come up with some sort of spatial partitioning scheme or some sort of bounding volume hierarchy. A spatial partitioning scheme would be something like dividing the space into grids via an arc tree, a quad tree, or just a grid or some other technique. And then you could check and see inside of which of these grids your objects lie. And then if two of them, you had another object here, are in the same grid, then you would check and see if they are colliding because they can't collide at all if they're in two completely separate grids. However, that's not the technique I'm going to be going with. The technique I'm going with is something called a bounding volume hierarchy. And basically the way this works is you would wrap each of your objects in some sort of representative bounding volume, in this case, a sphere or a circle. So once all of your objects have a bounding volume with a simple collision detection technique, spheres are very easy to check for collisions against, then you can build up a tree which you can then traverse to detect collisions. Now, say you have these objects in here, you can construct some sort of bounding volume hierarchy tree. It's a long name, but that's what it's called. And basically the way this works is I have these two objects and they're very close together. So I would bundle them together into an even larger sphere, which envelops those two. Then you can see that A and B are pretty close together, so they would get wrapped. And then you would have one very large sphere because now you have two other close spheres, these two, and this would envelop those spheres. Then I can transform this into a tree structure where this largest sphere is the root and ideally each of the children there's only two children for each node in the tree and so basically then what i can do is i can say okay well this root has two spheres that are its children which is these two spheres here and then each of those spheres has two children in this case uh the left sphere has a and b and the right sphere has c and d now what i can do is i can use this tree to check for collision so what i would do is i would traverse down the tree and then i would say okay are either of these ones colliding and if they're not colliding then we know that the objects inside them there's no way that the objects inside them could be colliding with the objects inside this one and then I would go down another layer say uh, these two objects were colliding well then I would have to traverse down into these nodes and check and see if these are colliding or not so that's what I'm about to try and implement is the bounding volume hierarchy. Once I get this done, I will move on to collision detection resolution and I'll update you guys once I get something along this working. So I figured I'd give a brief update real quick. I have the bounding volume hierarchy being created and you can visualize it because I have added some drawing routines so that we can see it. Uh, if I start up the scene, you'll notice that we have a green sphere, blue sphere, and a red sphere. And the green sphere is the uh, hierarchy. So that's the root node of this tree. And then the blue and the red are its children. And as you can see, the green envelops the blue and the red spheres, and the spheres envelop the cubes, which is exactly what I wanted. Eventually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it so I can actually have cubes be part of the bounding volume hierarchy, because something like this wall, 
Um, as you can see, if I tried to wrap this with a sphere, the sphere would not match it closely at all, and we'd have a lot of uh, false collision uh, triggers for this. If I go back into my code, I have a third cube that I can add to the tree. And as you can see, I just create a game object, which is a cube. And up here, I add in a bounding sphere, which envelops the cube. It just uses its position and its rate. And I gave it a custom radius, which matches it. And then I just tell the tree to insert the cube uh, and the, the tree will dynamically update. If we go back into it, you'll notice now we have two red spheres, two blue spheres and a green sphere. Uh, this green sphere is the root once again and then we have the red which envelops two cubes and then we have the blue so it would be like this green sphere is the root this is its first child the red sphere is its second child and then this red sphere has two children the blue and the red sphere here so the bounding volume hierarchy is working and i'm really happy with that uh next step that i have to do is actually check for collisions. So uh, dynamically update this so that it is continuously creating it based on whatever's in the scene. So I'm probably gonna be testing with these cubes and then it will use these spheres to test and see if we actually have any collisions. And if we do, I will generate the contacts and then resolve the collisions. That's the plan at least. Hey guys, I figured I'd give you a brief update real quick. It seems like I've got collision detection working for a few different shapes. So I have a sphere and a bunch of cubes and I have this big plane and I have sphere versus sphere collision detection working and sphere versus plane and box versus plane. So if I move this sphere down, then you'll notice as we get closer and as soon as we intersect with that plane, it changes from green to red. And same thing with this box that we've got right here. So if I take this cube and move it down, as soon as it hits that plane, it turns red. This should, in theory, be generating all the data I need to to resolve those collisions so that they actually land on the plane and would stop or roll or whatever, in theory. <laughs> now, I'm not actually sure if it's generating the correct data until I start resolving those collisions. But I will update you guys once I get collision between all the different shapes working and then I will hopefully have some sort of collision resolution going on too by then. So I will update you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, I figured I'd give you some progress report. So I just figured I'd show this. This is all the math that I've had to prove to myself because the book I'm following along with doesn't actually really explain any of this. So this is the separating axis theorem. And basically the way that I'm using it in the physics engine is to detect collisions between two boxes or any convex polygons and then find the separating point. And so basically it's a ton of math to tell me, hey, these two boxes are colliding and the point that is causing this collision is right here from the perspective of this box. Yeah, it's a lot of math. But let me show you what's actually happening in the program because I think it's kind of cool. In the program, you can see that I've got these two boxes and this one's about to fall onto this one. And you can see this little blue line, which is basically telling me how much I need to separate the red box from this box. And it only turns red once it's colliding. And so basically this is what all that math is basically telling me how to separate them. And it's pretty cool because it works with rotations too. So if I rotate this box into some weird rotation, you can see that it's just sort of sliding down because it's getting separated along these axes and it always finds the correct axis. So yeah, it's working. Um, I wish I didn't have to do all this stuff on my own. Uh, the book doesn't do a very good job of explaining how all this stuff is working. So I'm sort of just figuring it out as I go. <laughs> but now that I have this working, I'm going to try and get it so that uh, the rest of the collision resolution actually works where it bounces and stuff and adjusts velocity so that it all works correctly. So I'll update you guys once I get that working as well. All right, guys, so this is my last update for this devlog. I never did get the physics fully working. Um, so you can see that they fall down 
and right now they just completely mess up and that's because I've been having problems with the torque and stuff. So the video you saw at the beginning is without me adding any of the torque in to these bodies. So if I just take out the torque real quick, we can run this again and they should run fine. So you notice they run fine, but then you'll also notice that they're bouncing like super fast. And that's because I'm having problems with the impulse as well. Um, my impulse resolution isn't working correctly. And apparently I need to apply some sort of iterative approach where I solve for the impulse several times over. I'm thinking I'm going to have to uh, rework a lot of the physics code that I have currently just to get this all to work properly. But I think this is a great start for my physics engine, and hopefully I will continue to tweak it and get it working better. So in the next tutorial, what I plan on doing is getting this ironed out so that it all works correctly, and then hopefully I'll actually have a pyramid of cubes that has a ball crash through it, and it all looks physically accurate. That is my goal. So that'll probably take another week or two, and I'll update you guys with that devlog as soon as I get it done. Also, I've just reached 100 subscribers. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone who subscribed. I'm really grateful, and it's just awesome that you guys have helped me get there. So that's it for this devlog. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.